are the, the largest surah in Quran. And it has the largest, the, the longest, or the largest ayat in Quran too, which deals with business. And so we spoke from Baqarah ayat 1 to 12. And so we'll pick up from there. Inshallah, we'll start the kutbah there. But just to bring us in, we won't start at 12. We'll start at uh, ayat 8. And always read Quran. That's our life. Muhammad the Prophet said, I'll leave you two things. First is Quran. And then my sunnah. Whoever follows those, it never go astray. So that's our foundation. We know. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Men and Nasi, men yakul am an abilahi, wa bil yomil akiri, wa ma hum bi mu'minin. Allah says in Quran, just giving us knowledge in this early surah in terms of the way it's arranged. There are those from among mankind, all who am and abilahi, who say they believe in Allah. What billion mal akiri and their future day. What man whom be mu'minin, but they don't believe. It's just information Allah gives us early. Now these people who are like this, Allah says, You call the own Allah, they seek to deceive Allah. Well, they am and those who believe. Show you how messed up they are. That they think they can deceive Allah. And those who believe. Well, man, yet the owner illa and fusi hum. Well, man, yes, but they only deceive themselves. But they realize it not. And that was our point too. They be thankful to Allah that you are conscious. That you are aware of your actions. Because if you are aware of your actions when you make a mistake, you're conscious enough to seek forgiveness. To seek his pardon and his forgiveness. So Allah says of these that they seek to deceive Allah. And the believers, but they only deceive themselves. But here's the thing. They're not conscious. They are not aware of it. It says, Wamaya Yes Urun. They only deceive themselves, but they realize it not. Now it's a blessing if you're conscious and you're doing good or bad, and you're aware of it. Even if you're trying to fool yourself. Even if you're trying to fool yourself. It's better to be aware so you can seek Allah's forgiveness, etc. And Allah say, come to Salat with a mind aware, right? Conscious. And why is that? Fi kulubihi maradun fazadahumullahu maradun Because in their hearts is a disease. And Allah increases that disease in them because he warned them and told them and given them. So there's a disease. And Allah says, Allah says, that Allah increases that disease in their heart. And for them is a, is a severe punishment because they are of the liars, they deny. Not Kufa, but they're liars. Kathy being there because they lie about it. They know, but they lie about it. Now keep in mind, but they realize it not. Now, what if they kill home? Let two see do fill art day. And when it is said, now remember they realize this not, that they're only deceiving themselves. So Allah says here, and we don't we won't stay there because we touched on it last week, but this is leading us into the other ayats. Allah says, He says, when it is said to them, let tu si do fil thee, don't 
make mischief in the earth. Don't, don't make trouble in the earth. Don't, don't cause problems, violence, destruction. Don't be a tyrant. Don't be an imperialist. Don't be an oppressor. When it said to them, don't make mischief in the earth. They say, oh no, we don't need the peacemakers. We, now you done, you done colonized people. You done terrorized people. You done enslaved people. You done stripped people of their name and their culture and given them a false religion and identity to themselves. But you the peacemaker? See, what I, what I say to them. He said, don't, don't, don't make trouble <laughs> in the earth. They say, they say, Paul, oh, I say, they say, in the man not new. We, Muslim, something like that, right? But we the, we the righteous. Now, this is key. Why it's important to think of while you're conscious. Allah says, Allah, in the home, why surely they are the troublemakers. They are the mischief makers. They are the oppressors. They are the tyrants. They are the imperialists. They are the colonists. They are the ones who come in and dominate others. Bring death and destruction. So they say, we the people, the law says this, he says, but well, by surely, they are, come on, Musi doing that. They are the troublemakers. But here's where we be thankful. Because they say, well, yes, Urun. Allah say, but they realize it not. That they think they're doing something good and righteous. But you're the troublemaker. You're the oppressors. You're the violent ones. But you say you're the peacemaker. I said, no, they're the mischief makers, but they realize it not. That's torture. Because if you're doing this and you're not conscious of it, you can't even say, hey, I'm doing wrong. I need to correct this or to seek the forgiveness. So you keep doing it over and over and over again, which leads you straight into the hellfire. So we are to be thankful to have conscience and be aware of our actions and our deeds. That's a mercy from Allah. So that's ayat 12. Keep that twice. It said they realize it not. And the word here is sha'ara. Yes, urun. La. No. La. Yes, urun. This sha'ara is to be aware. But it's associated with hair also. Hair, right? Like hair. Your hair, which has thin roots. You know, just doesn't go deep. So a baby is born with hair, right? Many babies are born with hair. So saying you don't even, you don't, they don't even have a, 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 even a baby's ideal of how much they're off track. Even a baby has enough hair, enough sense, instinct. To know they're off track. Okay? So, now, we go to, this is where we had stopped last week at 12. And Bakura. We'll focus on that the next few weeks. Now, what it is said to these ones, believe, come on. Just like the people believe. Now here it doesn't say kema. It doesn't say lehom aminu kema emmane muslimun or like the Muslims believe or like the Jews believe or like the Christians believe. It says amane nasu. Like the people believe. Like this is just a common sense that I gave to everybody. Be right by people of your Muslim, Christian, or Jews. Believe like everybody else believe. The regular good folks. That's yours. This is mine. I'm not to oppress you. You have a right as a human being given to you by God to live a good life. 
I'm not to dominate you. I'm not to enslave you. Common sense to all people. Believe like regular folks believe. That's what it say. A lot say what it is said to them. And it says, Olu, and nuk minu kema amana sufa ha u. And they say, so we believe like the fools believe. When it is said to them, believe it's like regular common folks. That people need food, clothes, and shelter. They need love and affection. That babies need to be taken care of. Just regular folks, regular believe. When it is said to them, they say, oh, so we believe like, like the fools believe. So obviously they have a superior attitude. That, that perhaps they figure they're, they're enlightened, they're Illuminati or something. You know, maybe they feel that we're the goyim, you know, that, that you just cattle and they have an upper hand and more enlightenment. So everybody else are fools. So that's why they have to be enslaved and led around in the world. That's the mind of oppressors, right? So Allah say, just believe what it said to them. Yo, just believe like everybody else, man. Everybody else want a job. Everybody else want food, clothes, and shelter for their family. Everybody else don't want to be in poverty. They want jobs for their people. Just believe like that. No, we can't believe like that. They got to be oppressed. They got to be led. They got to be enslaved. They have to be denied. So they will depend on us. And we have to keep them out of the economic atmosphere. And we're to feed them and to keep control of them. No, that's foolish for us to believe like the rest of the folks. And look what Allah says. Allah says, now they are the fools. Now, this is Quran, beauty of Quran, why the uh, Quranic Arabic is important. All of the translations are good, but why it is important to study, learn the Arabic, not that all of us are going to do that, you speak your language, but someone study and try to help, right? It's right here. He says, they are the fools, but they know it not. They're the foolish ones. They know it not. But in the Quranic Arabic, it says this. La Yahlamun. See, before it says, La Yashurun. It says that twice. They realize it not. But here it says, La Yahlamun. That they have no knowledge of this. That they are the fools. They've studied. They've learned. But they have no knowledge that they're the foolish ones. You see? But if you read just the English, which we have to work with what we have, of course, it would only say, they know it not. They know it not. They know it not. But you wouldn't see the fine distinction in the actual words that being used. You see? So here it says, la la moon. They have no knowledge of that. That they are the foolish ones. But they have no, they don't just not realize it. They have no knowledge of that at all. Just share with us what Quran says. This early chapter, just giving us information. What is that? They call it the Amenu. When they meet the believers, such people, when they meet the believers, they say, call you. They say, we believe. We believe. That's what they say. But Allah says, When they are with their evil ones, their shaitans, their evil ones, their conversation changes. Allah says, Allu. When they are with their evil ones, their conversation change, and they say, oh, we was just joking. We were just mocking. We were just faking. Allah 
اللَّهُ يَسْتَلْزِئُ بِهِمْ وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي تُكْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ Allah says that He will throw their mockery back onto them. He will throw their mockery and their faking back onto them. And He will leave them, give them rope, and leave them blindly wandering around, wondering in their transgressions. See, Allah, Allah don't play with you. you we may not see it all. But Allah makes it clear that such people, Allah will leave them wondering with their root and their transgression. And Allah says,
He says, when your Lord said to the angels, Khalifa, right? I'm making in the earth a Khalifa, a ruler, a leader, right? And he told all of them, and they questioned him, etc., etc. When you go to chapter 7, you'll see that all of the angels bowed when he told them make such the, right? To the new creation. All except Iblis. And Allah said, what is the matter with you? What is the matter with you that you have not submitted as I commanded you to, right? Now, what does Iblis say? This is beauty of Quran, power. Iblis said what? He said, why you didn't do this? He says, and at Cairo, men who, right? I'm better than that man. I'm better than that Khalifa that you're making. And at Cairo, men who? Well, why you think you're better, bro? Kalaktani menor. You created me from fire. Now, let's back up and look at this so when you read this. Kalaktani menor. You created me from fire. I have light. I give off light. I have understanding. I brighten up the darkness. I give off light. I'm fire. Watch the comparison. And you made him from clay, black mud. He don't give up any light. He don't give up any understanding. So I'm better than him because I give light. I'm a fire. I give light. So now here the, 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 the fire projects light. Now, but what he didn't see, then we go back here, is, yeah, you created, Allah created him from mud. But see, you can't see. Because you know you can be blinded by the light, right? You walk in the room, somebody turn the light on real quick, you blind, you get too close. It was all blinded by the light. Don't get too close to the light, right? Well, at least was blind by the light. Because yeah, I created him from mud. But Allah also says, when I breathe into him of my roof, of my spirit. So I gave him spirit, I gave him intelligence, so way to hope. He said, when I have duly proportioned him, when I balanced him, meaning I gave him enough water, enough fire, enough air, enough earth, when I have so way to hope, you know, uh, 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 somewhere, right? Somewhere. It's level. So way to hope when I balanced him. And to show you this in Surah Allah, Allah says, Set me history, Rabbi Allah, right? And Talaka So after I balanced him, so all you see is the black mud. All you see is the clay and the darkness. But I've given him more, I've given him a mind and a heart, and I breathe in him of my spirit. So you ain't better than him. For you got some light, but you blinded by the light. Because Allah says of the human being, what? And I say it all the time. It's in Surah Teen. Laka talak nala sanafi asani taqween. I've created you in the best mode, best upright mode. You're completely balanced. So anyway, that's how Quran sends you all these beautiful places connected. So anyway, so Allah says of such a person, he can snatch from them, he snatches their light. Boom, right? After you kindle the fire, this is the comparison. Now, some gonna love this here, because we used to say it all the time. Then Allah says in Surah 17, 18, pardon me, Sun Moon, Book Moon, Om Yun, Fahom La Yodji Om. Deaf, dumb, and blind. <laughs> he said such people are deaf, dumb, and blind. And they will not be able to return to the guidance. You know how beautiful Quran is? Watch this. A person that's deaf if you're born and you can't hear, a person that's deaf can't talk. See, the hearing is so important 
Number one, they call we hear, right? You put your hand to the ear. People have to use sign language or read lips. If you can't hear, all the other senses is fine. If you can't hear, you can't talk. A person that is born deaf, they can't hear, nothing can come in. If you have a child, and you just sit him in the room for the rest of his life, and he's not around people talking, he can't talk because he didn't hear anything. So when you know about this, so Allah says deaf. A person that can't talk, they say dumb, right? So they have to use sign language or read your lips, right? So Allah says deaf. He's giving, you, giving us some understanding. He says deaf, right? You, they can't hear the Quran. They can't hear the message. So because they can't hear it, they can't speak it. So Allah says deaf, dumb, and blind. Now in the earlier part, we pointed this out. Allah says they can't hear it. There's a seal on their heart and on their hearing, but there's a covering over the eyes. A covering over the eyes don't necessarily mean you're blind. You can be hoodwinked and somebody can take it off. But Allah says these people are such a picture as deaf, dumb, and blind. So it lets us know how important listening is. Because if you can't hear, then you can't speak. That's the reality. It's that, you know, we may have never thought of that, that whole hookup, but uh, when they say somebody's dumb, that means they can't speak. But that's because they, they haven't been able to hear, so they communicate in other ways, right? Reading the lips, sign language, etc., etc., right? So Allah says, deaf, dumb, and blind. Now, if they can speak, they can hear. You can speak, but they're also blind. See, a deaf person, they can't speak, they got sign language, right? Sign language, you can communicate. They can read the lips, they can communicate. But here, if you're deaf, dumb, and blind, you can't even read the sign. You can't even see the signs that Allah speaks of. You can't hear it. You can't speak it. You can't even read a sign. They cannot give you anything. So in the early part, which we pointed out, what does Allah say? Allah says, when it comes to those people, whether you warn them or do not warn them, they will not believe. That's Quran, just going from Quran. So he's give us this idea. And then he says, Al Kasibi Minasamai Fidulumatum Wa Ratundun Wa Burakum Yet Aluna Asabi Ahum Fi Adani Himasawai and the Ramal. Wallahu bihi tum del kafirin. And that is this. Straight from Quran. Is this. He says, when he sends a cloud, this is a likeness of, he'll send a cloud, a dark cloud with rain, right? Dark cloud in the sky. And there's three things. Remember, deaf, dumb, and blind. He says, in that dark cloud, is dulum, is darkness, thunder, and lightning. In that dark cloud, you'll send in the sky darkness, thunder, and lightning. And he says, the lightning, the strong lightning, causes them to do what? Put their fingers in their ears out of fear of death. Now, here before we close, this is to show you Quran. Fear is in. Fear. Person say, Fee si bili la. Sabil is the path. In the path of Allah. Here it says, Fee adhanihim. Adhanihim. You know what? Adhanihim. The more than calls what? Adhan. But it don't say call here. Adhanihim. You know what this word means? Ears. Who's on his ear? Adhanihim. They put their fingers in their ears. So adhan, right? Adhan is to call, but it also means ears. To hear. So the adhan, that's why the Muezzin puts his hand to his ears, because when he calls the adhan, the importance is more on hearing and listening. He don't necessarily do like this. It's like this. So it's important that you listen.
person that you hear. So when the then is called, it's really saying you have to listen to what's being said. And what's being said is Allah is greater. Muhammad is his messenger, etc., etc., etc. Just like when we come to the Juma, right? It said you have to sit quietly and you have to listen. So the same word for Adhan is associated with ear, with hearing. And that is so very important. Let us close for the part of Kutba. Rabbana Ati Nafi Dunya Hasnatain, Rafa Akirati Hasnatain, Waki Nadan bin Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulahi kareem Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, Dear believers, as we mentioned last week uh, The next few weeks we're just going to touch on Bakara Just going to go through some ayats in Bakara As we move forward uh, in Quran, from Quran So before we close, just mentioning here what Allah says, and he says Allah encompasses the disbelievers. For the sake of time, we're just going to read this Arabic and English. Allah says this. He says, the lightning, the lightning all but snatches away their sight. Okay? And it says, when the, when the lightning, the light, boom, flashes and surrounds them, it says they move. They walk. You read this. It say they move forward, right? It says, But when the darkness come, they stand still. Flash of lightning come, they, they see a little light, they move. But when the darkness settles, they so afraid, they just stand still. Whereas Muslims, believers, you move in the day and in the light. Because you have faith in Allah. You move when the lightning flashes and when the lightning don't stop. Why? Because you know Allah is the light. So the Muslim, he moves whether it's day, whether it's night, whether it's a flash of lightning, whether it's thunder. None of that scares the Muslim. And we're not just talking about thunder from the sky. We're talking about those that think they got such power, such authority, that they think they can frighten people. Say, don't move. Do I tell you to move? I roll these tanks up in on you. Really? <laughs> when did you become Akbar? We say it all the time, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> so Allah says, Allah says, if he wanted to, he could take away their sight, right? And he could snatch away their hearing and their sight. So now, believers, as we close, just to bring everything in, talk quick community stuff, not directly, is we're blessed to be Muslims, as we mentioned last week, in America. We are Muslims and we are believers in America. You got to get that. Influence of Islam from the time of Muhammad the Prophet Islam, is deep, obvious, and subtle. Just the name of our country, Amir Ka. See, there's no C in Arabic, so you'll see some people, and I just got it from a bookstore. It's called Africa. It used the K. So for America, some spell it with the K. So when you hear America, you have to hear Islam. Amir Ka. Amir is leader, right? Amir is ruler, is leader. And Ka is you, not Kum. Kum is Assalamu Alaikum. That's plural. Ka is individual. So Amir Ka, Amir Ka means the ruler in you. Individual responsibility. That's Islam. That Allah ain't gonna judge you based on me. He gonna judge you based on you. You're gonna be given a book in your hand, your own book. I'm not gonna be giving you a book. You're not gonna be giving my book. It's individual responsibility. A mere cup, a leader in you. And in this time, in 
in this time, you just had the inauguration of a descendant of African Americans, a descendant of slaves, a black man whose name is Barack Hussein, Muslim name, no accident. In America, you have Barack, Baraka, blessing, right? Hussein, Rabbi Nafi Dunya, Hassana, Hassana, Hassana. In America, think on that. Not one time, two times. <laughs> people some of you say he say something say I didn't stutter man you heard what I said we didn't stutter we put him in again in case you thought that was an accident he's back in there that's a great sign a great sign now I'm gonna say this in close you know they had important documents and I've said this before the Constitution the document right the preamble right but one of the most important ones we know is that Federal Reserve note, that dollar, right? That money. Some says they're God. But a good thing it says in God we trust, he matter law, right? We taught on the spider. That's chapter 29. On that dollar bill, all of them, the one dollar, the five dollars, there's spider webs all around it if you can ever never noticed it. Let's look at it when two miles over. There's spider webs. All on that. And I'm going to close when I said this before. I believe this. That there are signs. And on that dollar there's that eagle. American eagle looking at the pyramids from Egypt. Right? There's a pyramid but there's an eagle there. Representing America. And the head of the eagle. It represents the three branches of government. We have to say this today. The three branches is the executive branch. The legislative branch and the judicial branch. Just watch this. The executive branch is the president. That's the head, and he got words in the mouth. He probes on him, right? Because the because the president speaks for the country. When you look at that eagle, now the two wings represent what? The legislative branch, the Senate, and the and the um, House of Representatives, right? With the shield with the thirteen stripes. Now at the bottom you have the feathers. How many feathers is there? There's nine feathers representing the nine judges, the judicial branch. Now we got we gotta say this just to just to get somewhere. Now that head is looking not away from the pyramid, it's looking towards the pyramid. Now that pyramid is where? It represents ancient Egypt. Egypt is in Northeast Africa. Don't get, don't ever forget that, bro. <laughs> it's in Africa, Northeast Africa. Now, now the, the 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 colonizers at the Berlin Conference and all that, they came and divided up Africa and colonized Africa. Don't forget that. But the reality is, Egypt sits there in Africa. So the eagle is looking there at Africa, at ancient Egypt. Several reasons. One is when they set it up, they set it up like the Bible and Quran say Egypt did, right? Egypt had slaves to build it according to the scriptures, right? Egypt had mystery systems just like America, etc., right? But even deeper than that, for us, encouragement. Not only is it looking at Africa, it is from Africa where they bought the slaves. But under that pyramid on the African side, it says Novos Order Sectorum, meaning New Order Society on the African side, which is a message you can take is that the New Order, the New World Order, the New Society is going to come from those from Africa. Those that lead that are going to be in the, have something to do with that. And I believe with everything, and it's clear that we have an African-American president, brother. That's no accident. An African-American president, and with this African-American president, most certainly a new world order has come in. They tried to stop it. They do everything they can to stop it. Now, we're not talking about him. We're talking about the symbol that you have a black president from one that was at the bottom, the descendants of those that was cast in the grave. Those that was at the bottom, the rejected stone, that one from them was raised up by the help of God and by those same people that oppressed us. And that's what Allah said in the Quran, right? That
that he will take the leadership, brother, whether they like it or not. So read the signs of the impossibilities. And I know all of us here, especially us old heads, I said, man, I wouldn't have never thought we had no president, a black president this soon. And then twice. So we have to speak about what's going on in the world. But you have to know what the signs are, brother. I mean, he ain't going to change the world, but it's a sign of a new world order. That there's a new thing going on. And you have to keep up with what's new and don't let the, the, the past shackle you. Hold you back. Look forward to the future. And that's what Muslims do, right? Rabbana anti nafi donya hasnatain wafi akirati hasnatain. We always look to the future. So let us, we had to mention that because this is something that impacts on our life, impacts on the world, and this was a great thing. It was a mighty thing. Any election at that level, because there's a mindset that can set the atmosphere, right? Positive or negative, and we know what it was like before him. We know what it was like before him. And again, that's just a sign. So all we want to do was point out that that is a sign from Allah, and we trust in that there. And let us know that as Muslims and believers, you are blessed. You are fortunate. Many are called through or chosen. So if you are and sincerely as we are, Muslims and believers, no matter what struggles you have, because Allah will say, Allah says, do you think you'll be able to say you believe and not be tried and tested? For surely we tried and tested those before you, brothers and sisters. You're going to have that. But be honorable and be thankful that you are a Muslim, you are a believer, and you have been raised up from the bottom. And the sky's the limit. Believers, believe that way. Don't let none of this stuff shut you down. You're going to make mistakes. Young brothers, older brothers, I don't want to keep it. We're going to make mistakes. They set it up like that. Shaitan set it up like that for you to get caught up in the drugs and the this and the that. You don't bring that in here. They send that in here. You just need strength and support to help with that. You don't have jobs. You don't have that. We're not justifying any of that wrong. I can't do that. You know that, right? Love the brothers. I can never justify that. But somebody else set that atmosphere up for you. For us to be destroyed and kept out of the race. The economics. The step out of all of that. Somebody else set that up. So you have to be patient and have faith in Allah and have understanding and strive to change that. Allah will help us. Never give up. Never give up. Many of these older brothers, myself and others, these brothers was out there too. We have a different history, a different time. Gangsters, bank robbers, they'll tell you this here. They'll tell you what they were doing. And Islam brought them in. Right? Brought us off the street. Cleaned a lot of us out. So it can be done. Never doubt it. What I've been acting after you doing your house in the tank, where if it's accurate, I'll tell you house in the tank, why can't I have that been known? Alhamdulillah, he rubbed it out of me. He comes to life.